Yeah. All right, well, that's it. We need it. We need it. Okay. We will. This is the wreck of the old number nine.
Uh, but that's what the tip jar is for. We hope to be able to continue. In the past, the uh, church has been paying for those ads, and they might be able to continue, the owner, but uh, we're not sure because the budget is short. And that's why the tip jar is there, is we are trying to pay some of our own expenses where we can. And, you know, it's strictly a voluntary thing. If you, if you, this is a free event, and we don't charge to get in here, but if you want to help the budget out a little bit, drop a coin or a bill in there on your way out if you so choose to do so. If you do, we thank you very much and God bless you for it. Uh, our second act is uh, Doc Davis and Chantel Davis. They've been on this stage many times before. You know what to expect from them. It's always good, something good, uh, something authentic, something real. Uh, here they are, Doc Davis and Chantel. <laughs> I want to thank Chantel for coming out tonight. I was scared she wasn't going to be able to make it. Our other member of this Glen Eye Cow Band is in Missouri. And so he'll be back next month. He's going to be our permanent sound man. That's a pay it you It is. It is. <laughs> but Chantel's going to be a freshman that's coming uh, August? August 15th. August 15th. So she's... Nearly out of school, she's ready for college before long, so ladies and gentlemen, I give you Shan Bell. Yay! So I'm doing a song by Belly Eilish called Six Feet Under.
great job, Ken. Bill. I'm going to try something I've never tried in three years of being on the Denny Chapel stage. <laughs> I had to change just a few words in there because when that song was originally written, there been a whole lot of other performances in the past ways. It's called I Dreamed of Hillbilly Heaven. I dreamed I was there in heaven. I 
And I asked old Waylon and Merle, I said, well, who do you think will show up here within the next 40, 50, 60 years? They had me a big old tally. There's a book. In it, I saw the name of like Kenny Chesney, Toby Keith, Keith Urban, Trace Atkins, Blake Sheldon, Brad Paisley, and Chris Lake. Some of the other ones like Vince Gill, Don Crooks. Of course, they talked about Roseanne Cash, the Judge, and Andy Tucker, Reba McIntyre, and Hank Jr. Of course, down somewhere in that 40, 50, 60 years, old Alan Jackson, Tim McGraw, Travis Tritt, Andy Travis, and I'm not too sure if Willie might be up there by then. Then there's old Kenny Rogers. I said, well, where's old Clint Black's name on here? Oh, there it is. And there was Loretta Lynn, Faith Hill, and Doc Davis. That's when I woke up. I dreamed I was there in his early heaven. Oh, what a beautiful sight. And I met all the stars in his very heaven. Oh, what a star thing of mine. And I met all the stars in his very heaven. Oh, what a beautiful star thing of mine. Yes. Yeah. That was long, wasn't it? We got enough time for my second one, or did that take up <laughs> two solid times? We run on schedule? We're, close. Pretty, we're close. Okay, I'll sing this real fast. Are you with me on this? Is like, I'm like, I'm there you go. As I walked out in the streets of the world. As I walked out in Laredo one day, I spied a young cowboy wrapped in white linen, all wrapped white linen and cool as clay. Oh, be the slowly, play the fast slowly. Sing without much as you carry me along. Take me to the valley, lay the side of me. I am a young cowboy, no, I've done wrong. That's usually where Chantel comes in with her harmonica, but she left it at home tonight. I see by your outfit. You are a cowboy. Words he did say as I told you he was by. Tom said down beside me, hear a sad story. Shot in my breast, and I know I must die. Go oh, fetch me some water, cool cup of water. My heart's lips and power is said. Before I return, his spirit had left his John, who was maker, this cowboy was dead. Woo! Yes! Thank you, thank you.
Doc, you know, I've got to ask you this question. Oh, man. <laughs> have you ever been to the, on the streets of Laredo? I have. I have. <laughs> I'll bet you have. <laughs> With my guns on. <laughs> you always have your guns on, Doc. <laughs> uh, black powder, of course. <laughs> Okay, uh, our next performer is someone I met at Quitman, Texas at the Public Library where they have a monthly acoustic bluegrass jam. And uh, this person showed up not to play a bluegrass instrument or to sing a bluegrass song, but just to sing for the joy of singing it, and more so, to sing a cappella without any instrumentation. Now, I don't know how many of you have ever tried to just burst out in song from your, say, your seat or standing as I am now. I remember the nearest I came to it was my friend uh, Harris Barnes, the late Harris Barnes, who uh, he and I worked together for many years. He was from Clarksdale, Mississippi, and he was visiting here one time, visiting me, and he was telling me about he and his wife doing something called the Cotton Eye Joe, which at that time was a very popular dance step. And, uh, and I just, uh, as he looked at me and said that, I, I, I mean, he, he had no more said the words Cotton Eye Joe than I looked at him and I said, Don't you remember, don't you know, Daddy worked a man called Cotton Eye Joe. Had it not been for Cotton Eye Joe, I'd been married a long time ago. I'd been married a long time ago. I mean, it was instantaneous, automatic. Now, that's the one time that I can remember ever doing that. But this is, this is Larry Sandrell. And he sang three songs in rapid succession at the public library in uh, Quitman, Texas, about a month ago. It was in June. Uh, and I was so impressed with his confidence. Oh, by the way, some of you know that I do know a little something about a cappella singing. Uh, I did write a book about 20 years ago on the subject. And the book is still in print. Just FYI, you know, for those of you who are entered in such esoteric information um, but uh, I could not resist you know when I heard and saw Larry Sandrell stand up with extreme confidence and belt out three songs one right after the other uh, and I asked him invited him to appear here and duplicate that performance and here he is Larry Sandrell the acapella songster Man with two hats. He wears many hats. <laughs> yes, I am a man with many hats. Yes, I've had a lot of uh, practice with this a cappella singing. Um, I've got all the uh, music posted in my shower and all <laughs> the words, so I've had a lot of practice in uh, singing a cappella. Um, I thank you for that introduction, Joe Dan. Um, Somehow or other, I don't seem to have the same kind of confidence that you uh, placed in me, but I'm going to do my best. There's only two things in life that make it worth living. Get done too good for a feeling women. I don't need my name in the marquee lights. Got my song and I've got you with me tonight. Maybe it's time we got back to the basics of love. Let's go to Winsboro, Texas, Waylon and Willie and the boys. The successful life we're living's got us feeling like the Hatfields and McCoys. They're playing Hank Williams' paint so hard. I've been living by Texas. Ain't nobody feeling no pain. Go and sell your diamond ring. Buy some boots and faded jeans. Let's go away. 
This golden tide choking me, take your high society, we're crying no day. We've been so busy keeping up with the Jones, oh God, garage and for skin building up. Maybe it's time we got back to the basics of life. Let's go to Winsboro, Texas, Waylon and Willie and the boys. The successful life living's got us you do like the Hatfields and McCoys. The playing Hank Williams pain song, Jerry Jeff's train song, blue eyes crying in the rain. I've been looking by Texas, ain't nobody feeling no pain. Woo! Yes! Oh, thank you. <clears throat> Is this, uh, Am I speaking or singing too close to the mic or anything like that? Good. Sounding good. Okay, good. Um, I just started uh, dating a, a lovely lady, and uh, however things kind of got out of control a little bit, she was uh, rapping on my door for about 45 minutes, and I told her, I said, I don't care how long you go rap on that door, I'm not letting you out. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I just kid you about that. that uh, I, I was uh, dating a lady and I, I said to her, I said, uh, ma'am, I, I, I said, you know, I hope you live to be a hundred years old. And she says, I do too. And I said, and I hope that I'm the last voice you hear. <laughs> But, uh, <laughs> in other words, I like to live past uh, uh Anyways, here's another song that I've uh, sang in shallows in time. <clears throat> Got an old slouch hat. Got a roll on my shoulder. I'm free as a breeze to do as I please. Just bombing around. Got a million friends. I don't get any older. Got nothing to lose, not even the blues. Just bombing around. Whenever troubles start to worry in me, I grab my coat, my old slouch hat, and hit the trail again, you see. I got a trusty dog, wheels, I call him Rover. We travel the road, loose in our loads, sleeping in clover. Whenever troubles start to worry me, I grab my coat, my old slouch hat, and hit the trail again, you see. I ain't got a dime, I don't know where I'm going, but I'm free as a breeze to do as I please, just bumming around. Woo! Yes! Well, I have to say, this is unusual for me. Uh, I, 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 I don't ever remember singing in front of a crowd, just a <laughs> But uh, what a great job! Well, thank you. It's uh, yeah, a lot of reverberation coming at me here, but uh, I appreciate your patience. Um, another song, and, and this one here I first uh, heard, I know some of you probably heard this song back in the late 40s or early 50s, probably a Roy Rogers uh, rendition. But um, this one here goes back to my high school days, and there was, uh, uh, and you all remember Frankie Lane, and he did an album where he was uh, on the cover of the album uh, as a gunslinger, and it was uh, entitled Hellbent for Leather, and uh, a bunch of us high school guys used to sing all those songs and uh, 
we used to call ourselves uh, the Lodge Brothers because we'd hang out uh, at a buddy's house and sing them song. Um, anyways, here is one of my favorites, and uh, um, it's uh, the Navajo Trail. How, how many here remember uh, Roy Rogers or any other Gene Hock who yeah. sang those songs? Okay, great. Now, I was going to ask for a little partic uh, audience participation. I, you really don't have to join in if you don't want to because, uh, you know, I can understand how when somebody asks for our, uh, audience participation. But if you all could just uh, uh, try to bring your hands to together kind of like a cup and try to make some uh, hoof sounds from a horse, something like, something like this. Y'all do that? Okay. That, that sounds pretty good. Now you don't have to do that throughout the entire song. Here's I'll tell you what. After I sing the first verse, you can stop uh, at that. And I'll I'll kind of go like that there. Okay. Um, that's all started out, and then I'll I'll, I'll jump in here. Every day. Along about evening, when the sunlight's beginning to fade, I ride through the slumbering shadows along the Navajo Trail. And every night, when the crickets are calling and the coyotes are starting to wait, I dream. By a smoldering fire along the narrow train. I love to lie and listen to the music when the wind strokes the sage brush guitar. And over yonder hill, moon is rising. It always finds me wishing on a star. Well, what do you know? It's morning already. And the dawn is so silvery pale. It's time for me to climb in my saddle and ride the narrow trail. Ooh. Awesome is the right word for that. Thank you, Larry Sandral. Um, <clears throat> Larry, I have to ask you a question, too. Go ahead. Do you still have the Frankie Lane Hell Bent for Leather album? Uh, I do. It's, uh, I got a CD of it now. I, I noticed they, they left out one of the songs on the CD. What was that? What did they leave out? Well, that was one uh, that uh, went something like this, bullet in my shoulder. Do you think it was just too bloody for a modern taste? So. <laughs> uh, okay, everybody be on the lookout for that. I didn't know about that. I'm, and I'm a, for 30 years, I was a very, very ardent uh, record collector. I never went anywhere without looking for records. And I have, a Laura, I do have a quite a large collection uh, but I do not have that uh, that album I'm going to be on the lookout for it myself Hellbent for Leather Frankie Lane uh, Frankie Lane was you know Doc mentioned Tex Ritter who's pretty famous for that song that he did now several other people did that song but Tex probably did the most well-known version of it um, Tex happened to be when I was a teenager was my favorite singer of all Everybody. There was no, I didn't think anybody could touch him as a singer. 
especially cowboy songs. And, and to this day, I don't think anybody can match him for authenticity as a cowboy singer. Uh, I don't know how many of you know this, but he sang the uh, Oscar-winning song uh, in the soundtrack of High Noon. That song, that soundtrack was written uh, by a Russian American who spoke kind of broken English, but he was a very, very talented uh, music, musician and uh, composer. And he, when he wrote, and I, again, some of you may, or already, may have read about this, but after they finished filming High Noon with Gary Cooper, and who was it, Grace Kelly, I guess, was the female star in that, and they were not at all happy with it. They, in fact, they thought they had a dud, a, a flop. And so uh, they hired uh, uh, this guy who was well known for writing winning soundtracks for, for movies. Um, I, I can't think of his name now. It's a Russian name, uh, but maybe I think of it before I finish this sentence. I hope I do. But he wrote, the, he wrote the song and the whole soundtrack, and then he started interviewing cowboy singers because he felt like that it had to be just the right voice. It had to be perfect or it wouldn't work. In other words, the whole idea was the soundtrack was, was supposed to save the movie and make it, make it a commercial success. Otherwise, they were already convinced that it was going to be a total flop, a dud, wasn't going to make enough money to recover costs and all that. And so, uh, he, and, and among those he interviewed was Frankie, I mean, audition was Frankie Lane. Now, Frankie Lane came out uh, later with a very popular version of High Noon, maybe on that album. Uh, uh, in fact, a lot of people that I have met over the years think he saw, assume he'd sang it on the soundtrack, but of course he did not. Tex Ritter did. Uh, and if you, I hope if you if you haven't ever noticed that uh, the soundtrack of High Noon, uh, Tex Ritter's voice on that is at his very best. You know, uh, and he did accept the the, uh, the Oscar. He was, of course back then it wasn't the big deal it is now. That was 1952, as I recall, and uh, th that it was not the huge television event that it came to be later. So a lot of people. Many, most people did not see it on TV. I'm not, I, I'm not even certain that it was broadcast on TV in 1950. It may have been, but I didn't see it. Um, but, of course, I didn't have a TV in 1950. <laughs> but nevertheless, um, uh, for a lot of people think Frankie Lane sang the quintessential version of High Noon. But, of course, as good as Frankie Lane was, he didn't sing High Noon nearly as well as Tex Ritter. Of course, nobody did. Uh, and uh, that, um, that guy who wrote the soundtrack, Dimitri Tiomkin. Ah, got it. D-I-M-I-T-R, Dimitri, D-I-M-I-T-R-I-T-H-O-M-K-I-N. May not have the H in it, it may just be T-O-M-P-K-N. But I read the autobiography of Dimitri Tiomkin just to see what he said about uh, when he interviewed those singers. He interviewed Burl Ives, who at that time was probably the best known singer of folk songs in the world. Uh, interviewed, uh, I, when I say interview, I mean audition. He had them come in and sing the song, you know. Uh, Frankie Lane was one of them. Uh, everybody that was famous at that time was, was auditioned for that. Uh, but only Tex Ritter passed muster in the view of two. And here was the word that he used in his biography to describe what it was that Tex Ritter had that nobody else did. He said, Tex Ritter, now remember, he spoke in broken English, so I am quoting him exactly as he said it. He said, Tex Ritter sing cowboy songs like nobody. <laughs> And I, and I agree there, that he is by far the best singer of a cowboy song. Uh, our final performer, and the one that's going to take us out to the conclusion, and at the end of their performance, they will be asking the musicians back on stage, and they will be asking you to stand and sing Will the Circle Be Unbroken with them. Um, 
But this is only one of the, I think only one of this band. This is a large band, by the way. Uh, and I think only one member of this band has ever appeared on this stage before. Is that right, Fred? Right, yeah. So Fred Newton has appeared on this stage with another band, uh, a previous band that he was in. Uh, this band is called One Way Bridge, and I'm not going to introduce the individual. Oh, was it one lane? I had it one way, and I printed it out that way. Sorry about that. One lane bridge. But I think you get it. You get the point whether you see it as one way. But they, I'm not going to introduce because I have seen band members or band leaders, and I know how much they like to introduce their band members. So I'm not going to steal the thunder. Uh, I'm going to let the band leader introduce the band. And the, the only one I had met before tonight was Fred Newton, who's become a very dear friend of mine. So here it is, One Lane Bridge. Thank you, Jody. Yeah. <laughs> Joe, Dad, we really go more than one way, so that's <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, we're glad to see all of you this afternoon, uh, or this evening. Of course, that's, that's plus or minus three minutes. Yes, sir. <laughs> that's plus or minus three minutes. Well, we didn't know. We, we <laughs> you don't have to be exact. Okay. Okay. <laughs> don't, don't, don't go off by yeah.
doing a great job on the drums is a friend of ours. His name is Jim Latham. And we're on the saxophone. He's our newest member on the vocals. And sax is, what is your name? It's Hugh Ward. Don't give him a big man. Um, our sound person out there is Jim's lovely wife, Shirley Latham. We couldn't do it without her. And my name is Marie Black. All together we make up this band called One Lane Bridge. And we're so glad you're here. Sweet love, sweet chariot, coming for the cat. Coming for to carry me 
get fixed back here. This is a little unique. I know you've all heard this song, and you can all sing this song with us, but it's a little bit different than when we heard it when we were kids. I feel 
y'all. <laughs> and we can have church up in here better than we have that song. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's time for us to go. We'd like to have all the musicians and singers back up here with us. Well, if you have another song or two that you need to do, go ahead and do them. You know, you... We can do Wayfaring Stranger. You will do Wayfaring Stranger? We've already got everybody coming up now. <laughs> You're in charge. <laughs> Let's do Circle. In C. Let's do it. Come on, Larry. Come on, y'all. I'll come back now. You're talking to all the short people? <laughs> yeah, I'm talking to the short people. Now. <laughs> oh, My good friend he couldn't make it, and I'm going to be sorry he didn't make it. I'll take it that way. <laughs> Your good friend. Oh, you mean uh, yeah. Nicky? Ron Lawson. I was at his house today. He said he was going to be here. Well, uh, Daryl had told somebody he was going to be here, too. Yo, Fred, I think. Crowd without love. You must have told people I was going to sing or something. Huh? You didn't tell people I was going to sing tonight, did you? No. Well, I'm going to find out who did, or everybody would have showed up if it hadn't been for that. <laughs>